The temptation to show the average departure around your day's personage who was black as a hastily huddled over a dark riding dress proclaimed him a churchman into the hostel. This was Greta of Olsho, Parson Holden, a very worthy little man, though rather perhaps too fond of the source of the field and the bottle. To Roger Morrow and Nicholas Asherton, he was a cause well and was much seen by the latter, often riding over to Hunvish or Carus at Downwell. Parson Holden had been sent for by Bess to administer spiritual consolation for Richard Baldwin, who she thought stood in need of it, and having respectfully saluted the magistrate, not whom he stood somewhat for, and shaken hands cordially with Nicholas, who was delighted to see him, he repaired to the inner room, promising to come back speedily, and he kept his word, but in less than five minutes he reappeared with the satisfactory intelligence that the afflicted Miller was considerably calmer, and had listened to his counsel much edification. Take him a glass of acrobatic best, he said to the hostess. He is evidently a cook to law and will be the best for it. Strong water is a specific I always recommend under such circumstances. Master Sudo and indeed adopt myself and I am sure he will do it. It's hard best when you have ministered for all the women's wants and must crave your attention to my own and beg you to fill me a tank card with your oldest ale and toast and to all the to eat with it. I must keep up my spirits worthy sir, he added to Roger Norwell, for I have a painful duty to form. I do not know when I have been more shocked than by the death of poor Mary Baldwin, a fair flower and early nip. Nit indeed, if all we have heard be correct, rejoined Norwell. The forest is in a sad state, reverend sir. It would seem as if the enemy of mankind by means of his abominable agents were permitted to exercise uncontrolled dominion over it. I must need say the forlorn condition of people reflects little credit on those who have them in charge. The powers of darkness could never have prevailed to such an extent if duly resisted. I lament to hear you say so, good Master Norwell, replied the rector. I have done my best, I assure you, to keep my small and widely scattered flock together, and to save them from the ravening wolves and cunning foxes that infest the country. And if now and then some sheep have gone astray, or a whole lamb, as in the instance of Mary Baldwin, have fallen a victim, I am scarcely to blame for the mischance. Rather, let me say, sir, that you, as an active and zealous magistrate, should take the matter in hand and be severe dealing with the offenders arrest the progress of the evil, no defence, spiritual or otherwise, as yet set up against them as proven effectual. Justly remarked, Reverend Sir, observed Hart, looking up from the memorandum book in which he was writing, and I am sure your advice will not be lost upon Master Roger Norwell as regards the persons who may be afflicted by witchcraft. Have not our sagacious monarch observed that there are three kinds of orcs who may be tempted or troubled, the wicked or their horrible sins, punish them in the like measure, the godly that are sleeping in any great sins or infirmities and weakness in faith, to waken them up the faster by such an uncaught form, and even some of the best that their patience may be tried before the world, as Jobs was tried. For why may not God use any kind of extraordinary punishment when he pleases him, as well as the ordinary rods of sickness or other adversities? Very true, sir, replied Holden, and we are undergoing this severe trial now. Fortunate are they who profit by it. Hear what is said further, sir, by the king to sure pass. No man declares that wise prince ought to presume so far as promise any impunity to himself. But far far on he gives us courage, for he adds, and yet ought not to be afraid of that or anything that the devil and his wicked intrudes can do against us. For we daily fight against him in a hundred ways, and therefore, as a valiant captain prays no more being at the combat, no stays from his purpose for the ramishing shot of a cannon, nor the small flat of a pistolet, not being certain what may light on him, even so old we all be to go forward in fighting against the devil without any greater terror than these his rarest weapons than the ordinary whereof we have daily the fruit. His majesty is quite right, observed Holden, and I am glad to hear his convincing words so judiciously cited. I myself have no fear of these wicked instruments of Satan. In what manner may I ask have you proved your courage, sir? inquired Roger Norwell. Have you preached against them and denounced their weakness, menacing them with the wonders of church? I cannot say I have cried hold rather abashed, but I shall henceforth adopt a very different course. Ah, here comes the ale, he added. 
taking the home and thank our own best. This is the best cordial where we're just saying one storage in these trying times. Some remedy must be found for this intolerable grievance observed by Genova. After a few moments of pleasure, until this morning, I was not aware of the extent of the evil. But suppose that two malignant hags who seem to reign supreme here confined their operations to lighting corn, maiming cattle, turning milk sour, and even these reports I fancied were greatly exaggerated. But I now find from what I have seen at Sabden and elsewhere that they fall very far short of the reality. It would be difficult to increase the darkness of the picture, said the chirurgian. But what remedy will you apply? The cautery, sir, replied Hart. The actual cautery. We will burn out this plague spot. The two old hags and their noxious wounds shall be brought to the stake that will abet a radical cure. It may when it is accomplished, but I fear it will be long ere that happens, replied the chirurgian, shaking his head out of Are you acquainted with Mother Demdike's history, sir? He added Hart. In part, replied the attorney, but I shall be glad to hear anything you may have bring forward on the subject. The peculiarity in her case, observed Sewell, and the circumstance distinguishing her dark and dread career from that of all the witches, is that it has been shaped out by destiny. When an infant, a malediction was pronounced upon her head by the unfortunate Abbot Paso. She is also the offspring of a man reputed to have battered his soul to the enemy of mankind, while her mother was a witch. All parents perished lamentably about the time of Paso's execution at Warley. It is a pity their miserable infants did not perish for them, observed Holden. How much crime and misery would have been spared? It was otherwise ordained, replied the Bureau. The wreck of her parents in this way, the infant was taken charge of and reared by Dame Croft, the miller's wife of Warley. But even in those early days, she exhibited such a malicious and vindictive disposition and became so unmanageable that the good dame was glad to get rid of her and sent her into the forest, where she found a home at Rugley, then occupied by Miles Nutter, the grandfather of the late Richard Nutter. Aha! exclaimed Potts. Was Mother Demdi so early connected with that family. I must make a note of that circumstance. She remained a for some years, returned Sudo, and though accounted of an ill disposition, there was nothing to be alleged against her at the time, though afterwards it was said that some mishaps that befell the neighbours were owing to her aged set, and that she was always attended by a familiar in the form of a rat or a mole. Whether this was so or not, I cannot say, but it is certain that she held Miles Nutter to get rid of his wife, and procured him a second spouse, in return for which services he bestowed upon her the tower on his own means. You mean Mountain Tower, said Nicholas. Aye, Mountain Tower, replied the child. There is a legend connected with that structure, which I will relate to you and none if you desire it. But you see, scarcely had Estemdi taken up her abode in this lone tower than it began to be rumoured that she was a witch and attended Sabbath on the summit of Pendle Hill and on Rimington Moor. Few would consort with her, and ill luck invariably attained those whom she borrowed. Though her hideous and forbidding aspect, and with one eye lower set than the other, she had subtly enough to induce a young man named Sylvanus to marry her, and two children, a son and a daughter, were the fruit of the union. The daughter I have seen at Wally, observed Hoss, but I have never encountered the son. Christopher Demdi still lives, I believe, by the Chirurgian, though what has come of him I know not, for he has quitted these parts. He is as ill wretched as his mother, and has the same strange and fearful look about the eyes. I shall recognise him if I see him, observed Hoss. You are scarcely likely to meet him, returned for, as I have said, he has left the forest, but to return to my story, the marriage state was little suitable to best MD, and in five years she contrived to free herself from her husband's restraint and ruled alone in the tower. Her malignant influence now began to develop throughout the whole district, and by dint of menaces and positive acts of mischief, she exhausted all she required. Whoever refused her request speedily experienced her resentment when she was in the fullness of her power, a rival sprang up in the person. And Since known by the name of Chatos, which she obtained in marriage, and this woman disputed best enemy supremacy, each strove to injure the adherence of her rival, and terrible was the mischief they wrought. In the end, however, the Dempsey got up, and years have flown over the old hag's head, and her guilty career has been hitherto attended with impunity. Plans have been formed to bring her to justice, but they have ever failed. And so, in the case of old Chatos, her career had been as able and as successful as that of Mother MD, but their course is well now run, said Hoss, and the time is come for the extirpation of the old serpents. Ha, who is that type of Christ? But that you are sitting near me. I should declare you were looking at me now. It will be Master Hoss over the re of the Boris, observed Nicholas with a laugh. He 
feared him not by the attorney angrily, but let us have the promised legend of the Hall Tower. Willingly, replied the child, before I begin, I must recruit myself with a can of ale. The flagon being set before him, Sudol commenced his story.